Just when you thought things couldn't get any worse for Donald Trump in North Carolina after the Mark Robinson scandal, he went ahead and dug his hole deeper on Saturday by imploding during his rally in Wilmington. Now, before we dive into this one, let me just note that there was not a single mention of Mark Robinson, the gubernatorial candidate and self-proclaimed Nazi whom Trump endorsed and praised as the second coming of Martin Luther King Jr., which likely means Trump has been briefed on how damaging an association with Robinson will be for his electoral prospects in the swing state. But here are the facts. Donald Trump loves Mark Robinson and politically and ideologically aligns with everything Robinson stands for, hence why he endorsed him to become North Carolina's next governor. Now that that's out of the way, let's begin with a quick introduction to Donald Trump's rally by a MAGA host on Right Side Broadcasting Network who predicts that abortion will drive voters to the ballot box in favor of the guy who wants to ban abortion. There are two key issues that should drive you to the polls to vote for President Trump. Number one is abortion. Okay, you cannot normalize abortion. AKA, we shouldn't normalize women's equality or women's rights. Please, oh please, double down on that position as we head into October, Republicans, which apparently Trump is going to do in the final stretch of his campaign as he goes on to tell women that if they elect him, they will no longer need to even think about abortion. Women will be happy, healthy, confident, and free you will no longer be thinking about abortion because it is now where it always had to be with the states. Actually, Donald, women didn't need to think about the legality of abortion because it was the law of the land until, of course, you had it overturned by appointing three Supreme Court justices. Now they have to think about it, which, in my view, will not give Donald Trump the boost that that right-wing host is predicting it will, nor will attacking Kamala Harris for having worked at McDonald's, but that is exactly what Trump goes on to do. She lied. She lied about McDonald's. She said she worked in McDonald's. She said she worked in McDonald's. Oh, she worked over the French fries. It was so hot. The heat, the heat, it was so hot. She'd burn her hand every once in a while on the grease. Oh, McDonald's. It was a lie. She never worked at McDonald's. And the fake news doesn't want to mention it. Simmer down, Grandpa. She did work at McDonald's. You just want to falsely claim she didn't because you know that makes her more relatable and more in touch with everyday Americans than you. A billionaire who's never stepped foot in a supermarket and a convicted felon business fraudster who's had everything handed to him by his slumlord father. So, as you can see, Trump is baselessly spewing lies because he has absolutely nothing against Harris. In fact, he got so desperate that he then falsely claimed Kamala Harris has banned gas-powered cars. She wants to ban the sale of gas-powered vehicles. She wants to, she's already banned them. Yikes, the old man reeks of desperation. Anything to avoid talking about Mark Robinson, Project 2025, or his disastrous and unfavorable policies. Speaking of avoidance, here is Trump claiming that he'd love to debate Kamala Harris again, but can't because it is, quote, too late. And they would like, just announced a little while ago as I was coming off the plane, they would like to do another debate. The problem with another debate is that it's just too late. Voting has already started. Sorry, Donald, but I'm going to have to hit you with a fact check. The last debate in 2020 landed on October 22nd. Kamala Harris is challenging you to debate her on the 23rd. It's not too late. You're just a coward. A coward who has resorted to outlandish hyperbolic claims such as suggesting Kamala Harris will, quote, kill the American dream forever. If Kamala Harris is reelected, she will kill the American dream forever. She's not competent to be president either, but I, you know, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude. A little too late for that. Once again, the adjudicated rapist is factually incorrect. Harris wants to guarantee first-time homebuyers receive a $25,000 down payment to help them literally achieve the American dream. Trump, on the other hand, plans to give tax breaks to billionaires and impose higher tariffs on all foreign goods, which will both raise costs for everyday Americans and raise their taxes, respectively, making it much harder for Americans to achieve the American dream. P.S. 
he is very incompetent. The amount of gaslighting and fear-mongering that comes out of this convicted felon's mouth is exhausting. It's truly all he has left in his tank. Here he was, falsely claiming that illegal immigrants have taken every single job that has ever been created in the past two years. It's just they're taking your jobs. They're taking your jobs. Every job produced in this country over the last two years has gone to Illegal aliens. Every job. Think of it. A xenophobic lie and a distraction from the fact that his administration lost more jobs than any president since Herbert Hoover and a distraction from how Biden and Harris added all of the jobs that he lost back to the economy and then some. Like I said, the gaslighting and scaremongering are strong. So is the stupidity. Here is the job killer complaining that inflation is going down under Biden and Harris. And we will rapidly defeat inflation. So inflation is a misnomer because the inflation is now getting stabilized because the our country is doing badly. Did Donald Trump just admit that inflation is being stabilized under Biden and Harris? I think he just did. Let it be known, North Carolina, Trump just gave credit to Harris and Biden for taming inflation, making it the first and only truthful thing he said during his rally in North Carolina, which I think I'll cap coverage of there. And just a big FYI, Trump never uttered the name Mark Robinson once. No mention of Robinson's Ashley Matt. Madison account or his pornography website comment tirade about cheating on his wife with his wife's sister or Robinson praising slavery as a good thing or referring to himself as a quote black Nazi. Fortunately, Tim Walls was on it and let the crowd in Pennsylvania this morning know just how extreme and dangerous Trump's pal Mark Robinson really is. Take a listen to Walls as he weaves a powerful story about how working class Americans built the tanks used to win World War II, which he concludes by putting Robinson's pro-Nazi ideology past on full display. That iron from the northern Minnesota Iron Range fueled the steel mills here right in the Lehigh Valley. <laughs> Together, it was our people that built the tanks that won World War II and freed the world from Nazi oppression. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed that Nazi tyranny. We got folks running as Republicans for governor that are proud to refer themselves as Nazis. Let's not pretend that there's a gradual difference between the folks that are running here. That they're running together. Damn right. Trump may try to brush Robinson under the rug, but I don't think Walls or Harris are going to let him get away with it. And the fact that Trump avoided bringing up Robinson during his rally in North Carolina proves how damaging Robinson will be for his already flailing and struggling candidacy. 45 days left until we send Donald Trump and Mark Robinson, the anti-Semitic adulterers, packing once and for all. Thank you guys for listening to today's episode of the Gen Z Perspective. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the show and give us a five-star review on Apple because as you can see, the MAGA lunatics have bombarded the podcast with zero-star reviews. I think we're worth a little more than that, but I also think it shows you how terrified they are of our generation. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys next time on the Gen Z Perspective. The Gen Z Perspective's theme song was created and produced by Pokari.